Hello and welcome to the YouTube channel Implications of Attachment Research. I'm Helen Beckwith. I'm a clinical psychologist and researcher at Cambridge University. I'm joined today by Professor Marinus van Eijendorn from the Netherlands. He is a professor of child and family studies at the universities of Leiden and Rotterdam. And he's also a Wellcome Trust visiting professor at the University of Cambridge Medical School. Thank you very much for joining us today. I wanted to start by asking you um, which of your sort of uh, recent attachment research um, do you think has some really important implications for clinicians and practitioners working here in the UK with children and adolescents and their families? Thank you for this opportunity to talk about uh, our work uh, in the Netherlands. Um, I think uh, I'm always having an interest in basic as well as in applied science so attachment theory is uh, a very nice context or framework for doing both basic and applied work um, and I think I would like to talk today about our video feedback intervention mm -hmm. which has those two sides of the coin uh, it's basic science as well as uh, uh, applied potential for clinicians as well as practitioners uh, more broadly mm -hmm. and uh, so we have been developing a video feedback intervention program uh, since um, I think uh, three decades ago and with me I mean uh, with we I mean uh, Femi Uffer, my colleague in Leiden and Marianne bakermans Kranenberg. the three of us developed this program uh, tried to test it in several different uh, groups samples uh, and now it's I think uh, widely spread across uh, several different countries in, in the world uh, and also in, in England. Could you tell us what the video feedback program involves? The video feedback program is, is based on, on attachment uh, principles, uh, assumptions, hypotheses. Uh, it's interaction focused, that, that's important to note, so it's not um, focused only on parents or on children, it's on both, on the dyadic interactions. Uh, it's, it's using the videotape as a mirror to reflect upon. So we take recordings at home, uh, the parent and the child, and then uh, have the parent think about, reflect upon what he or she is uh, seeing, observing in the child. Video uh, is such a nice instrument to just uh, slow down, uh, carefully observe what's happening between uh, those two and uh, we have the experience that it's really kind of making parents aware of things that they didn't notice before. The a child is very very happy uh, at some points in the sequence of interactions and other points of the sequence uh, somewhat less happy and so they, they learn from the videotape uh, what to do to make uh, the child and uh, their, their own uh, style of parenting more adequate, more fitting to the needs of the child. can be used as a standalone if you would like to uh, have a very broad population being reached by it, uh, but it can also be used in clinical practice as a kind of an adjunct therapy. So for example, people have been treated or are treated for uh, depression. Um, in many cases children are forgotten as a as, as being part in the depressing depression of the of the mother or the father and we feel it's very important to add to uh, therapies focusing on depression of of an adult with children mm -hmm. to have it as an adjunct uh, video feedback to take care of of, of the, the children involved so um, it can be a standalone and it can be a, a kind of an adjunct approach mm -hmm. to issues. And as I understand it, the videos are, are replayed and watched together with the sort of clinician or therapist or researcher yeah. and, the, and the family. They sort of watch back the, the footage together and have that sort of shared reflection in, in the room, in the discussion. Yeah, it's, um, the, um, there's several different... Um, stages in the, in the process, so it's protocolized, mm -hmm. um, but we follow the, the hints and the, and the input of the, of the parent and the child uh, very closely. 
there is a format, uh, several different themes are being addressed. Um, and indeed, uh, video recording takes place uh, in the first session and then in the second session, the reflection takes place. And okay. um, between those two sessions, the intervener is carefully trying to uh, analyze what's happening and, and select different pieces of the videotape to show more carefully to and discuss carefully with the parent the next time. Um, and interveners uh, have been trained quite intensively mm -hmm. to, to, to be able to follow the protocol, to follow the lead of the parent and the child. In the UK, the clinicians uh, are very heavily encouraged to always provide sort of evidence-based interventions in the work that they do. Could you tell us about the sort of research evidence base for um, this video feedback programme? Sure, yeah. Um, first, I think it's evidence-based in the sense that there are several different randomised control trials uh, carried out. And on average, across different uh, groups and samples, um, it's about half a standard deviation, which is a technical term for moderate effectiveness. And I'm coming back to this issue later. Okay. Uh, it has been um, tested in the UK in several different places. Uh, Manchester, Johnson Green uh, did a um, large study with children with autism. Uh, based upon the principles of the VIPP, uh, added to that certain specifics for, for this specific group of uh, families with a child with autism. Very successful. Um, Alan Stein in Oxford did a study on eating disordered uh, parents, um, trying to elevate the level of interactions during mealtimes between babies of about one year of age and these mothers struggling with, uh, with eating. Um, and it was an adjunct in, the, in that case. It was a general approach of cognitive behavioral therapy for the eating disorder. And on top of that, a randomized control trial with the VIPP added to it. And that was also very successful. And there is a trial going on the Imperial, Imperial College in London uh, Paul Ram Chandani and uh, troubled at risk families. Uh, I don't know, it's not yet finished, but uh, it uh, looks very promising. And parents are very, very enthusiastic. Parents from mostly lower socioeconomic strata, minority parents, very enthusiastic about, uh, about this approach because they don't feel like patronized, you know, they, they really feel uh, empowered mm. because it's it's their own expertise that's being built up upon in, in this approach. So th those are the examples in the United Kingdom. We have uh, several uh, different trials in Holland, but also in the United States and other European countries. On average, it seems to be effective to elevate the level of parental sensitive interactions. Mm -hmm. With, uh, with the children, and also sensitive discipline is an important issue to be addressed because in the first year, okay, children need love and warmth and all that, and many parents know how to do that, but in the second year, third year, terrible twos, um, you get conduct issues, uh, children are not that obedient anymore, and many, many parents don't know how to deal with that type of misbehavior. And so we have built in the VIPP and SD, a sensitive discipline component, mm -hmm. based upon social learning the uh, theory, Patterson's idea about coercive cycles uh, that we all have seen or experienced as parents. Uh, the child wants uh, uh, a, a sweet, um, uh, an M&M, &M, um, and you don't want, as a parent, to spoil uh, the meal time, so you don't want the child to have the the sweet uh, stuff um, when you are in a, um, for example, in a uh, in a supermarket, in a shop. Uh, so what you see is that children are trying to uh, accelerate and exaggerate their distress, and they are going to go in the end into a kind of a temper tantrum. And that's the kind of negative spiral that many parents are going into if they then give away. They, 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 they really uh, are not uh, sticking to their first 
forbidding the the child to have this uh, this M&M, and, and 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 so they give in, and that's reinforcing very much so the bad behavior of the child. Mm -hmm. So that kind of negative spiral, spiral, um, I think we are trying to interrupt, break uh, down by showing the parent what to do if that cycle is going to emerge. Uh, trying to show the parent that um, in some cases the, the child is going along with the parent because the parent is um, very handy in distracting the child, for example, very, very nicely. And uh, that's what we try to elaborate upon in the video of bank. Having the parent reflect upon uh, strategies to use to avoid this negative spiral to, uh, to emerge. Mm -hmm. Great, so there sounds like there's evidence for the sort of feasibility of the intervention in terms of parents' um, sort of response to it as an idea, but also evidence in terms of um, improved levels of sensitivity, both in a kind of bonding way and also in a sort of disciplining manner as right. well. And what we also showed was, is that the child's behaviour at the end of these six sessions is indeed um, going to be on a lower level in terms of externalizing okay. uh, aggressive dis disobedient behavior. There's more synchrony between the parent and the child. They understand each other better. And so you have less of this, this uh, well, beginning of externalizing negative behavior in, in, in the child. And that, that sticks to the diet, that sticks to this family for several years. So okay. there's also long-term effectiveness. What we also have been, um, and that's a more basic aspect in a way, of the research that we did with the video feedback intervention, is that across the board you have this moderate effectiveness, mm -hmm. but some families are responding much better to video feedback than, than other families. Some children much better responding to this intervention than other children, and, 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 and we... So that's the question of what works for whom. What are the characteristics of parents and children that make these parents and children more open, more susceptible, we call it, more susceptible to positive changes in the environment. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's, that's under the umbrella of uh, differential susceptibility. Differential susceptibility uh, theory is one of uh, our favorites Sets, uh, sets of hypotheses uh, that we have been working on now for 15 years or so. And we did, some, we did discover some of the characteristics that, uh, that are very important to predict what, uh, what kind of parents and, and kind of children are responding best to positive changes in the environment, uh, triggered, for example, by video feedback. Okay. Thank you very much, Professor Marina van Eijendorm, for discussing your work with us today. Um, this is part of our broader Welcome Trust project that we're doing, sort of disseminating lots of the research um, onto forums like YouTube and for practitioners. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you.